Hey again everybody, just a little update on some final details on the propane car, the wooden caboose propane car. Here's the final paint with the latex, uh, not latex, but the enamel white rust-oleum in the windows and um, the, the, obviously the cab, the cupola roof and cab roof are reinstalled here. I just finished putting on these um, hook and eye latches that they're a little clunky looking I realize but it's kind of a safety item the way I look at it um, they'll you release it they're spring-loaded so you can release it by pulling down the spring and this way with both of them attached somebody's not going to be able to come up and lift up the roof of the look the, uh, the caboose and get into the propane controls what what I have in mind is when in operation I would have this one undone so that you could very easily come up raise the lid to the propane control again this is where the top of the propane tank would be and the the regulator and all that it just barely fits with the hose going down that way and then out the front i used some more um, hook and eyes and then some parachute cord just to limit the the travel there so that's uh step number one and I would leave that my, my plan is I would leave that undone while I'm operating the locomotive um, so that if, if there was an emergency you needed to come open this up and shut it down it would be easy to do the, I also installed another one here on the bottom let me unlatch that real quick and that that way with the top one latched the bottom one unlatched then you have access to open the entire compartment and again I've used a little hook and eye and the parachute cord as you can tell I kind of love parachute cord it's very handy for all sorts of stuff like this this is inside here the 2 by 4s that obviously is where the propane tank is going to sit and as I mentioned I notched out here in the lid the, there's just enough room I've showed in previous videos the hose will come down here and then go out through this large hole here I, I had to make this three quarters of an inch for the fitting that goes in and then the hose will go out this is the front of the of the uh, caboose and it'll go out for now it'll be I'll just lay it on top of the tender and connect it to the back of the locomotive so really the, there's one more thing I have to do and I'll work on it tonight I think is to make a draw bar that will connect uh, be a hard connection between the propane car and the back of the tender I've got the tender on the mobile stand there so I think in a minute I'll uh, you know I'll be able to bring that over here and well not not to this side of it but I'll be able to to um, fasten it together and decide what a good distance is I think I'll just mimic the length that the draw bar is on the locomotive if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about this is a draw bar it's a three quarter inch steel strap three sixteenths inch thick I believe and as you can see it's bent in this this case to accommodate the the connection between the locomotive and the tender so i'll make it about make the one for the the propane car and the back of the tender about the same length as this it should be fine so that's that'll be the last thing i'll do for the the, the um, propane car as i said i'm really pleased how it came out this is basically exactly what i have in mind had in mind and i'm very grateful to my friend russ to, for his um, taking my crude pen and ink sketches and turning them into a uh, CNC design that he could route out the, uh, the details of the doors and the windows and most importantly the, the siding and I really think that it was kind of a not a well thought out thing in my mind making the uh, the painting it this barn red paint but I really really like that I think it makes a great contrast and it's gonna look kinda cool out there on the track so very excited about that appreciate everybody watching and um, I will keep you posted on this thing um, you know looking forward to sometime before too much longer going out and actually doing a track test but we'll see started a new job this week and we had Hurricane Sally hit and um, so things are a little busy you know who knows what the schedule will permit but um, it is a goal of mine to get this thing out there and this was the last major thing that had to get done 
um, to enable a, an actual track test. So there we have it. Speaking of Hurricane Sally, you probably can hear a, a loud noise in the background. That is my generator over in my neighbor's yard. Um, it's the strangest thing as you can see I'm out here in the workshop and I've got um, power in my area. We had a lot of damage here. It was not nearly as bad as Hurricane Ivan. Um, you can see some branches dangling from uh, my, in my neighbor's backyard over there. Um, we were here 16 years ago for Hurricane Ivan and that was honestly that was very very bad. It was a category 3 just about a category 4 and um, people lost their entire roofs and a um, lot of wind damage and of course flooding as well. Um, here um, I've spent every evening um, since, the, since the storm cleared cleaning up the yard, raking, and I spent all day today cutting down a pine tree. I've, I've got trees, a ligustrum trees, um, and some Bradford pears along the back. And in the, in the very back area here behind this wall, there was a pine tree that had grown and it had, it got not knocked down, but uh, knocked, it was laying partially down and the last, it was so tall, part of it was sticking up above the workshop. So um, I really didn't want that thing to, if we had another storm anytime soon, I didn't want that thing to be a hazard. So I use this, um, I know I, I use a lot of Harbor Freight tools and um, I want to tell you, I didn't intend to even comment on this, but let me, let me do this. The, um, this, this is an electric powered chainsaw. It's a chainsaw on a pole that I bought from Harbor Freight probably two or three years ago and I have used this thing a ton I've had the, the worst thing is not bad bad but I've had to take the the blade off and you know redo it a couple of times um, just re reset the tracking but it's battery powered I've got the battery inside charging right now but it's been it only cost me I bought it when they were brand new it only cost me a hundred hundred twenty five dollars and it certainly paid for itself and everything that I've used it for. And if you're thinking about getting one and you have a need for it, go ahead and get it. Um, let me step out. I'll show you something that I did out here. You can't really see the pine tree, but you see my neighbors got some. They have some giant oak trees here, and these limbs. They, they were hanging over my house. There was a whole bunch of them early in the year that were sticking way over my house, about to where my hand is here, about the same distance as that upper one there. And you can, you might be able to to make out where these these ones have got sawed off. I talked to him. I got his permission first, um, but I spent an entire weekend out here with that very electric power chainsaw, um, cutting branches down that were overhanging my roof and he only lost one branch back here and it was one that uh, I couldn't reach and it came down and it landed on this fence here and he, uh, he pulled it over and sawed it up so I didn't have to worry about that but that I'm so glad that I prepared for the storm by cutting those um, those limbs down otherwise I, I would have had several in out here outside my workshop and perhaps um, you know even through the roof of my house which would have been terrible so again real excited about that um, that electric power chainsaw and you know come to think of harbor freight stuff you can't see it through the trees but it's a yellow it's a it's a harbor freight version of a mccullough chainsaw that um so you can see a lot of the ligustrum branches that I trimmed. That, I trimmed those before the hurricane season even. Just everything that was overhanging the workshop that I could reach. Um, anyway, I trimmed those with the, the uh, that electric chainsaw. But the, the, the generator that you're hearing running, that's my gasoline power generator. I bought it 16 years ago after Hurricane Ivan. D truly devastated our area. And um, I, I've, I've never really ran it for any significant period of time. Um, just tested it every single year that um, at the beginning of hurricane season. And this past year, I had to replace the fuel pump. And when I was replacing the fuel pump, I actually um, accidentally broke, or not the fuel pump, but the fuel filter. 
I actually accidentally broke the on off switch and um, it's, it's just plastic kind of a cheap plastic thing so I need to order a new one of these things um, the I didn't the switch itself is not broken or the valve I should say but the rubber outlet thing is uh, it broke and it broke off flush there actually I guess that was a, a little barb and it broke off so anyway I do need to order one of those but I replaced it with a brass one that I had from when I had an old pickup truck and it had a few manual um, fuel line manual fuel line cutoff like that and um, anyway that 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 uh, generator we were at without power uh, for two and a half days for, for uh, this most recent hurricane it was a week for Ivan and the, those generators are a lifesaver you know you can run your um, ran refrigerator Wi-Fi modem um, and a lamp and uh, chargers for cell phones and such like that so I was able to run all that stuff and um, it just gives you a modicum of of uh, control in normal life you you have no air conditioning you have no ability to do you know electric um, laundry or drying or you don't have any hot water heater if you have an electric one so you're still a little bit camping out in your own house but the generators are pretty darn handy and it's a weird thing I've got power on back at my house now two and a half days after we it came on last night when I was actually out there cutting the tree and my one of my daughters came out and told me that the power was back on so I figured the whole neighborhood was but it was not um, my neighbor still doesn't have power a day later so I offered that he could um, borrow that generator to power his stuff until he gets the electricity back on so anyway a little long-winded update on hurricane sally but it was a category two very close to a three lots of power lines down lots of trees down some damage to homes and um just uh, it was as uh, one of my bosses said it was an awful storm it really was not 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 devastating but awful and it'll take a while um, before everything gets back to normal but we'll we'll survive and recoup and and keep on trucking so that's my little update i hope everybody else is doing well and um take care i'll keep you posted thanks